can you hear it with gardening center? It's October 9th, and we're at it again. It looks like we're having cooler weather, and it seems like this time of year, I'm always planting something, keeping a uh, variety of different crops or succession planting. Today I'm planting some more cilantro. You can see I put quite a few seeds in here. Seems like uh, here lately that's all I'm doing is starting more plants. Uh, it's easy to do. Most home gardeners, you probably don't need this much. Now, this is cilantro again. I plant two varieties. Uh, one's uh, Santo. And the other one is slow boat. Now this is a slow boat that I'm planting here. I don't really notice a lot of difference between as far as fast they grow. Uh, by the name, you'd hope this one don't bolt as quick. But uh, this time of year with cilantro, it's with cooler days. We've been uh, mid 40s to. Uh, 50s, we might get up to uh, 60 in the evening. Uh, we're still having some pretty warm days, but we have had more fall weather here lately, uh, where it's uh, been in the 70s, which is great. Uh, anytime we can get those cooler temperatures, we can keep some of these crops going longer. But in order to uh, succession plant these, uh, you have to kind of time everything. And normally I tried to do uh, new ones about every couple of weeks, sometimes three weeks. Uh, a lot of times cilantro is slow. Uh, I don't have any that is small and sprouting. I do have quite a bit in the garden. Uh, but in order to keep it, in case that other bolt, I need to plant some more. Now this, the, a lot of people do like cilantro, so I have to have some for the the uh, market. But I like to grow a lot this time of year, so I can. Uh, I've got two ways that I preserve it. It just depends on uh, time and availability on my freeze dryers, but. Uh, the main two ways are freezing it, I'll vacuum pack and freeze it, which is excellent. I, I try to tell people if they do uh, buy fresh cilantro, uh, take and put it in a freezer bag and freeze it if you're going to do longer term, because a lot of times, uh, and I, I don't like grocery store stuff, but if you've ever been to the farmer's market and you have a vendor that sells cilantro, you'll notice that the smell is so much stronger uh, with that that you get from a farmer's market because uh, in my case we take and harvest this stuff the morning of the market. We don't harvest, we harvest a lot of things the day before uh, and we'll put them in the cooler because it's hard to harvest everything because it takes takes us normally about four to five hours and and that would just be a impossibility to try to rush up and do all that on farmers market day because you'd be up uh, at midnight harvesting and it's a whole lot harder to see stuff in the dark so but anyway this is the cilantro uh, I'll water this in and then we're going to get to some other ones uh, the whoops, we really like Mitchahili cabbage uh, and then the Hilton cabbage. Uh, they're, they're both, well, the Hilton is really uh, an apple. The, the Mitchahili is Chinese cabbage. And if you haven't grown it, I, I did just a, a video on just uh, growing this because uh, it's just such a wonderful flavor. And then some more bok to it because. Uh, 
bok, bok choy is good for all around whether you're going to uh, you want say to have more green drink healthy green drink uh, it's a lot of chlorophyll in it and the flavor is good uh, whether it's cooked or whether it's uh, raw and, and uh, raw is the thing if you want to uh, take and get all the benefits of it it also it'll uh, do good for adding in the salads and stuff like that but anyway we're going to get after another tree here now we're going to plant some bok choy here uh, my method is slow I'm, it's not like i've got to hurry i guess if you want to you can hurry i kind of uh I'm kind of sparing with my seeds. Uh, I'll do a couple of seeds per plot. Sometimes I might get an extra one or two in there, but uh, once they come up, I'll thin a lot of them. Sometimes I miss because you'll have a slow germinating seed, so uh, I'll have two plants grow up by one, but they're still usable. Just you'll usually just have a little smaller plant. Uh, now, bok choy is one of those for us in East Texas here, or for me, I can say uh, that it uh, tends to want to bolt quickly. It'll. Uh, it won't get really, really big because our temperature fluctuation is so much that, you know, when it's cool in the evening and then it gets up to, say, in the, the A's during the day or even possibly uh, warmer, uh, it'll start to want to go to flower. Now, if you're using it at home for uh, cooking or uh, blending you know juicing it uh it works fine if it's getting if it's got flowers it's it's not like it gets bitter or anything like that it's still uh good but a lot of times i won't take it to the market now i have uh, one customer says well you know if that's all that there is please bring it because uh, they know that it's uh, still uh good and usable but I do try to uh, I usually whenever I put a, a new transplant in the ground which is about two to three weeks old usually uh, sometimes four weeks but uh, I try to start another batch and I'm a little bit behind so my ones that I have now they're still small, but uh, I may possibly have a time period that I'll be with without this. But it, it's a good all-around uh, green for it, it's versatile. You know, it's it's good when it's stir-fried. It's it's uh, good when it's chopped up and added to salads, and it's good whenever it's uh, juiced. So that's. Uh, one of the advantages to it now of course people have different uh tastes so i might say it's good but unless you try it and grow it uh, you'll never know whether it's uh, one that you like or not but i plant quite a few of them the, the chickens will enjoy the extras if i have too many to, to harvest uh, it's always good to add to them because I try to keep my chickens all organic. Well, I say try to, I do keep them all organic. And, and uh, of course, they're not free range per se because they, they are in a uh, chicken tractor, but they do get moved uh, every other day so they have good green grass which is uh, 
a plus when it comes to good quality hay. That not only grass, but they'll take and uh, they like all the bugs they can get when they get moved. But and uh, I was going to say something about cilantro that I forgot, but now I forgot it again. So maybe I'll put that in there later. But part of why I plant so many seeds with cilantro, and that one thing you need to know about. Uh, cilantro is that uh, its germination rate goes down quite quick too, kind of like onions. So I plant a whole lot of seeds for two reasons. One is that I uh, can harvest it in clumps, uh, which makes it real easy. I, can, I could just seed this directly. I have before, but it makes it real hard to cut. Uh, especially when you start having uh, the leaves in there real tight in a row and, and a lot of them will start to yellow and, and such as that, which uh, will create a, a situation with not having a, you'll, it'll be more work harvesting. So if you're going to put them, if you're going to preserve them or, or such as that, it, it makes it hard to or time consuming I should say because you have to pick out uh, dead leaves and, and die in one so it's easier this way because uh, most of them if they're dead and dying they'll lay down and they've got room to uh, lay down in the garden but if if you uh, plant them in a row and especially if you've got a couple of rows pretty close together it really makes them hard to to cut. I did that one year. Uh, I had them in a four foot bed and I had uh, three rows there. And the first harvest is easy, but after that it's hard because you have uh, a lot of them that you possibly might have damaged in the process of harvesting ones. And then so the next time you go to harvest that next week, there's, uh, there's a whole lot of extra time going to pick from them. So, with this method, it got rid of all that uh, extra time consuming in, in it. And as fast as this grows, this is a, uh, you, you cut them and, and uh, in a couple of weeks they're ready to cut again. So if I have enough, I can just keep rotating out until they decide to start to bolt. Now when they start to bolt, uh, I can catch it and I can use those and, and preserve them. Uh, but if you let them go too far, which uh, a lot of you know, cilantro and, and coriander are the same plant. It's just normally, uh, here we always say cilantro, uh, say UK, they, they would probably say uh, uh, coriander because that's in the end, that's where you, when it bolts, that's when you get your coriander seed. But there's uh, one more tray. Now I'm going to uh, plant some Mitchell cabbage. Uh, I actually, I like this so much, I actually did a separate video on this because the the flavor is just uh, really wonderful as far as a, for a plant that has kind of a buttery flavor. It's, uh, and I thought maybe I was imagining that when I ate it, so uh, I'd ask Vicki if she, what she thought, and yes, it was kind of the same, and then my daughter Sheila, she uh, tried it and kind of the same thing it's uh, we were experimenting or kind of tasting the difference between uh, the 
Hilton cabbage, which is a Napa, which is, or I'll say Chinese either way, but which is, has a good flavor when it's stir fried. But the Michihili was really a good one. Now, I don't recommend boiling it, you know, like you would greens or something. I, uh, turnip greens or mustard greens. I recommend stir frying it because, uh, it's got a lot of moisture in it, so it works out good for that. And, uh, with the addition of, uh, some onions and, uh, of course, a little, little butter and maybe a, Head of garlic, depending on what your taste is, uh, it's it's really good. But it's like I say, it's got a kind of a buttery taste, and then it's got you can taste maybe mild turnip green and uh, mustard green flavor in there. And then I think after it's got kind of an aftertaste, you can taste like a mild spinach. So it's really a complex flavor with Michihili, but. Uh, that's growing it and picking it young now when it gets older i don't know i haven't really grown it into uh mature heads same way with the hilton i i like a lot of the greens at that younger stage they just uh i think they they're a lot healthier as far as uh vitamins and minerals and and they uh really uh, the flavor is totally different so if you if you're used to uh, getting greens at a certain stage it's kind of like when i uh, grow bok choy now my mother which just recently passed uh, she was really a fan of bok choy um, but after i had brought her some a few times and I didn't have any growing because of the temperature I couldn't get it to uh, not bolt uh, she had a taste for it so she bought some at the store and they pick it much larger and it, and uh, the flavor is uh, it's she just didn't didn't appreciate the flavor at all uh, but like it was, she could take and uh, stir fry it, and mix it with her with some eggs, scramble some eggs with it, and, and uh, it was really good that way. Uh, I well, this past week we had some extra from the farmers market, so I mixed me up some uh, juice, juice some up for drinks, and. The way that I do that, I I may just do a video on uh, making that, but I just use my blender and I'll make up a bunch at one time, and I and I just do a mixture of a lot of things. Like the past week, we had some Hilton cabbage, and, uh, and we had some bok choy, and of course we always have some extra peppers because we uh, grow so many. And so I add all that in there, or I don't like to add some green onions, which that are uh, even sweet yellow onions, just depending. And, and I'll blend it up real thick, and then I'll uh, pour it up into uh, canning jars, and I'll just put it in the fridge. And that way, whenever I need it, it's... Uh, it's a concentrate, so it doesn't take up near as much space. I'll just cut it about halfway with, with uh, water, and it makes an excellent drink. Of course, I do add garlic and salt and pepper and uh, turmeric. Little deal, but, and it it's never the same because I, I never use the same type of peppers. I never use the same type of green, so it's a good variety. But if you do some research, and you'll find out that uh, chlorophyll, which is most of your green juice drink, is uh, really healthy for your body. It's good for 
uh, detox everybody's wanting to uh, detox heavy metals and, and different things and chlorophyll is the blood of the plant and it really works for for uh, cleaning the body I'll put a little asparagus in there too asparagus is really great for uh, carrying stuff out of the body and like I talked about in one of my uh, garden updates that I still harvest asparagus. Everybody else might leave all theirs to go. Mine is really healthy. It's got good roots. It's only about, I think, three years old, but uh, it's really well established. And I work on the bed good. I give it a lot of uh, compost every year, give it two to three inches more compost. And before I do that, I'll lay down some uh, chicken litter so it's under the ground and the microbes can start breaking it down. But I can slip in underneath all that growth and I can find me a half a dozen uh, new uh, broccoli spears is coming up and all, I mean not broccoli, uh, asparagus spears is coming up and, and I'll blend them in there with the rest. So yeah, I, I'd say juicing, truly it'd be more like if you was going to juice with the Vitamix or something, not a juicer where it takes out all your uh, pulp and the fiber and stuff that uh, is also good for your digestive tract and uh, the nutrients that's in there once you get the healthy. But uh, when you do that with those, uh, you end up with a lot of probiotics because even though it's not fermented and you don't have the lactic acid and, and stuff like that it it's uh you don't kill all the bacteria and stuff with the heat and everybody's afraid of germs or bacteria you know it's all wash off uh, anything that uh, may get on there from our uh, weather now with all the stuff that's going on with it. So I don't have a bunch of extra aluminum and barium and all that stuff that, that they're finding in the rain, lithium. Uh, lithium is one of those things that when you feel really tired, uh, and a lot of times you won't know why, and if you've seen a lot of these uh, trails in the sky, uh, and this stuff starts coming down on you and it's just not good for you. But Michihili is one if you haven't planted it. And, and I don't know about y'all, but I have a bunch of seeds and I had actually harvested uh, seeds from a Michihili back in the spring. And I called myself looking for them and it was a, a fairly large amount if you look back and, and see my video. And I can't find them. So I'm still, it's a good thing I have some left from, from where I purchased them. But uh, I definitely would like to find the ones that I grew because I, I don't know if I didn't put them up because I was waiting. I germ tested them. And, and of course, we went through that in the older video to make sure that they were good and viable seeds. And they really germinated great. But uh, I don't know where they're at. Now I'm going to uh, plant some Hilton uh, cabbage, and I'm just about out of seed. Now Hilton cabbage is one that you can save seeds from, uh, and I keep saying I'm going to, and I never do. I end up pulling them all out, uh, but I need to actually uh, try to save some, so so I can have some of these seeds if I don't lose them. Uh, I think I'll probably start out with just one seed if I end up with cell trays that don't germinate. Right now I'm doing two in these, this first one. They do germinate pretty well. They have uh, ended up uh, in, in the past. They, they do really well. So even if I put one, I, I should have good success. The only thing about putting one seed, if you have 
seeds are slow to germinate. Uh, you end up uh, planting some of your plants and then letting others get up and then plant some more. Because uh, I have had where, you know, it might take a week longer for some of the others, possibly even longer than that. Uh, it's just got to do with the age of the the seeds and how uh, how viable they are. That's usually your well, I say that is no, normal for seeds. Uh, the older they get, the uh, lower the germination rate is. But we'll uh, we'll get by just fine, I do believe. Now, like I say, with Hilton cabbage, which I, the pack says it is Chinese cabbage, but it, it, when it grows up and matures, it looks just like uh, the Napa cabbage. And the flavor is pretty much about the same when, when we compare it to like a uh, blues variety or something that is a Napa that we, we grow. Uh, it really has good flavor to it. And this might seem time consuming, and it is. It takes some time. I'm not going to get down to where I start buying a, a vacuum seeder and, and going that way. Uh, if I was planting a lot of acreage or something, that might be different. But uh, I would say mine is just a large home garden and uh, the way I do it is pretty much like most of y'all would as far as uh, you eat what you can, preserve what you can and then you'd either give it away or whatever and I'd give some away and would we'll take uh, the rest to the farmer's market and you, a lot of you might consider that if you're uh, if you're wanting to get bigger on your gardening and and uh, take and expand but the cost is a factor uh, think about that because the farmers markets vary we're, we're lucky that we have a uh, farmers market here in Naxos is now um, Closer to Henderson, uh, Texas area, but their farmers market only runs like in the spring, and then I don't even know it's running now because uh, by now everything's burned up. And and uh, for me, I garden year round, so I end up with uh, a excess of, of uh, crops throughout the year and, and my intent is it's kind of like now I'm starting to get cucumbers again and I said for sure I'm going to do some pickles I'm not going to sell all my pit cucumbers up but uh, the thing about it is I like to plant enough so I have some for the market and so I should start here this this weekend uh, bringing a few because you know a lot of people that don't have they, they live in apartments they can't grow but they know that they know the importance of uh, fresh uh, vegetables and uh, being we are organic so uh, they don't have to worry about the chemicals and stuff like that. Uh, we do very little spraying. Now, we have done a little more uh, to deter bug damage to our, our brassicas, like uh, our cabbages and, and things. But normally, uh, we don't spray it at all. And, and now, with our spraying, we just use... Uh, as mild a stuff as we can. We've been spraying a little more uh, neem oil, which is uh, really worked good for 
to get rid of our aphid problem. We, we uh, probably should have started a little early with like our cantaloupe and, and honeydews because they were uh, they were doing so good and we tried to plant enough so we'd have some for the market and of course we've been freeze drying uh, some that's what's running now is uh, we have uh, some some cantaloupe and then some honeydews and uh, and we this year we've grown a muskmelon and uh, the Israel cantaloupe which is uh, to me it's like honeydew it's it's firmer on the green flesh but it's a whole lot sweeter than the honeydew that I'm growing so uh, we still might grow the honeydew next year we'll let's see uh, but the Israel uh, cantaloupe is, is uh, really a good replacement for it if you haven't grown it that might be something you want to try I know my uh, father-in-law before he passed that was one of his favorites uh, to grow and I thought I grew it in the past but apparently I must not have had good success once they did start producing because I never remembered a, a green flesh cantaloupe but the this here uh, for preservation uh, and we grow a lot, but for preservation, it's just a matter of cooking it down like you would uh, uh, turnip green or mustard green, collard, stuff like that, and take and uh, vacuum pack and freeze it. And it really, it, it's really good. It stores good that way in the flavors. Uh, there I'm just going back and and I didn't know if, if I'd had enough seeds to do two in each so and go back and add another seed for just in case and maybe get them going quicker but I would I would suggest to most of your home gardeners of course I know a lot of you got limited space, but try different things. That's the whole thing about uh, gardening. Don't be stuck into the narrative of the supermarket because uh, a lot of the stuff in the supermarket, it it is the quality is just low. A lot of it's grown too big. Uh, as far as in, in of course, chemical fertilizers, uh, they're just feeding the plant to grow it big. There, it's not like uh, your microbiology feeding it, like when you uh, grow your own and you grow uh, organically. What you do is you feed the microbes, and so your food is more nutrient dense. And and what that's going to mean is uh, you don't have to eat near as much of it to uh, supply your body. And your body a lot of times gets hungry because it's lacking something and if these nutrients in, aren't in there and a lot of people say well the soil is depleted uh, what well yes uh, a lot of soil is depleted and we have problems with uh, um, little micro aluminum and barium and stuff which affects your uh, pH in your soil and, and some of the uptake of certain minerals but when you do this and I use wood chip compost and uh, trees over years and years hundreds of years uh, this is uh, it's hardwood compost it's not pine now some things if you have to have a uh, low pH you might want to use pine compost like blueberries or something but when you when you use this method all those minerals that that tree has taken up and it's in, in that wood are now composted and put back into your soil. So what you're doing is you're, uh, you're doing more of a permaculture. You're not, 
and you're not disturbing it so much. I have a big problem with mushrooms growing because my soil is so good. When you have uh, that fungi, that that fungi that's in that soil is what breaks stuff down, and, and uh, plants give off sugars on the roots in exchange for uh, different things that these this, these uh, little microbes brings to them. So when you take and you grow organically. What it is, is you have much healthier food. Now, a lot of people grow organic, but they still kill their soil. And when you kill your soil, you drop your microbes uh, down. Now, a lot of them, if they have really rich soil, they can grow some, some uh, bigger vegetables. I've seen uh, where some of them uh, really do good. Of course, we pick a lot of ours yeah, when we harvest turnip greens, we don't normally let them to get bundle size. We'll pick them young enough that they'll uh, that we'll end up bagging them, and and uh, at that point, the flavor to me is better. Now, some people like old, uh, uh, tougher, bitter uh, greens. Uh, that's not us. Most and that's not most people. Most people. Uh, like them whenever they're smaller so we can we can give them a good healthy product or you can raise a good healthy product and it's just a matter of uh, uh, taking and and picking it when it's at its peak and with greens what we do now because we end up things like when we start just picking leaves and harvesting that way the stress hormone that's produced by the plant uh, when it's been, the greens have been taken off of the leaves and pull up. It entices uh, problems with bugs, and what will happen is aphids will, will sense this stress, and they come in. You'll have a lot of uh, other uh, pests that, that come in there and they eat holes in them, and so you don't have as good a product afterwards. So what we've been doing is we take the whole plant out as a row, and then we'll start a new new row and when we process ours, we'll just take that row out and we'll cook it down and then, like I say, vacuum pack and freeze. And of course, we'll eat it, eat us good batch while we're doing that. And it's not like you have to harvest the whole row and put it up if you're, you don't have storage space and stuff like that. You could take and, and uh, take out part of it and then reseed that, let that start coming back. and. And as you keep going, you'll you'll keep having new ones come on, and it's it's best on certain things like that, just like these, uh, to make sure you you start them where you have new ones coming on a couple of weeks or or maybe a month behind the others, so you'll have a a good flavor. You might get burnt out on it for a little bit, and then the next by the time the next crop's ready, you're ready for some more of them. <laughs> Lastly, what I'm going to plant for today is going to be uh, some more herbs. Don't forget about herbs, especially if you live in an area where uh, it doesn't uh, get too cold. A lot of these uh, herbs like uh, the oregano. And if you're going to plant oregano, if you uh, want a good, strong flavored oregano, the true Greek is a really Good one. A lot of your seed packs where you just buy oregano, uh, the flavor it has oregano flavor, but it's not very strong. So, but we're going to plant it. We're going to plant some more thyme, uh, or we don't have real germination, good germination on these seeds. But uh, we've got a little bit going, but we want some more. And we've had a problem about losing rosemary, so uh, we're. We're going to go ahead and, and plant it and see if, if we can't get uh, some more plants just in case we, we lose it again. And our sage is uh, it's getting kind of old. We just have one uh, of our containers of sage that's, that survived, but it's getting kind of old and the, it's really hard to to harvest anything off it now that's that's good and usable so but we'd like to uh, take and freeze dry some of it and put it in our collection of herbs 
But anyway, we're going to uh, get this tray planted. Well, we've got our seeds there. And while we're here, these are, are some more. Now, if you've seen earlier, we did, uh, in the year, we did unconventional potatoes because we had really small seed potatoes. Now, these weren't, they had small eyes. They weren't growing good. As you can see, we still have a few uh, pots here that they haven't come up. But if you watch the last garden update, we have some of these that are uh, doing well in our little greenhouse. We're going to try to get these to uh, maturity enough that we'll have uh, some more. These are uh, German butterball. And when we planted them in the spring, we got the seeds uh, Probably about in the ground close to the middle of April now for some of y'all up north that's fine because you've got cooler weather longer daylight and so you you could get them uh, up to size but uh, for us down here we get into the, that spot where the heat is and what it was doing was killing the plant and uh, so we harvested and they were all uh, more or less seed potato size or smaller now we did keep some that were uh, not set knives right now that we're going to try to use for seed potatoes next year. Now they're probably going to set eyes and start growing. Uh, what we do is uh, we wrap them in newspaper and then just put them away in the uh, crate and we'll come back to them in the, the spring and see if, if any of them are worth uh, planting. And, and normally there are some uh, that way. But anyway, I'm Thank you again for watching, uh, and I hope you uh, found some value, got a little encouragement to start you some uh, seeds for your fall garden, whether you're growing them inside or, or outside. And if you want to see more of these videos like this, just hit the subscribe, hit that bell, and select all. Give her a big thumbs up and share this with you. Enjoy that gardening experience.